red line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana Line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels right. I'd like to learn a little bit more about the Italian festival, so I've got a lady here, I'm going to let her introduce herself to tell us about the Italian festival history. Good morning and welcome to Tig Fall for the Italian Festival. My name is Marietta Moretta Coslin. Uh, I'm born and raised in Independence, lived there all my life, went to school there and everything. My grandparents, three of my four grandparents were born in Italy and so have a good Italian background. And uh, the festival actually started in 1973. Oh, wow. An organization of Italians and uh, community people, more, they weren't all Italians, there were some people just from the community, started a dance group with the, the year before we had had a centennial celebration. So they wanted, they kind of spun off off of that and they became the Little Italy Festival. Okay. The organization was called IACA. For the Independence Italian Cultural Museum, uh, Cultural Association. So, from there, they had it for seven years, till 1979, from 73 to 79. And of course, they weren't young people; they were kind of up in age. So they kind of had a trouble getting everything done for it. So they decided they couldn't handle it anymore. So there was a pastor in Mata Della Rosa Catholic Church in Independence that did not want it to die. So he organized a group of people that belonged to nonprofit organizations within the city of Independence. And that organization, representatives from that organization, formed the Independence Italian Association. All right. So we started. The first festival, the Independence Italian Festival, was in 1980. And we went uh, for quite a few years, and something transpired, and we, we split off. We decided to come here to Tikva, and uh, there was a group that formed the Sicilian Festival in Independence. Okay. But we came to Tikva 11 years ago. So that's how we originally got started with the festival. Well, that is really cool history right there. That goes way back. And, yeah, it and goes back. To the, the centennial was in 1972. Gotcha, gotcha. Great, great, great stuff, y'all. Let's go check out the festival oh, now. Rodney, you, uh, you stirred that pot? So no, nope, not yet. All right, y'all, I've got Father John Brown of Jesuit High School. How's it going? It's going great. It's going great. Look like you got some really good stuff going on here. We today. have a whole lot of good stuff going on. It's a little bit warm, but we all like it like that. So we're yeah. lucky to be able to be outside today. It, it wouldn't be Louisiana if we didn't. Look at all these trophies. So this, all these are going to everybody? That's what it's for, right. It's exactly what it's for. We do our best to uh, reward these people who have been so lucky to do some good fishing and have a good day and come out and support us. So, How long have you been at Jesuit? I've been at Jesuit since the year 2012. So uh, you were coming after the big hurricane then? I did. I was actually I actually lived in Mexico whenever Katrina hit New Orleans, so I came here after that. Oh, okay. that's right. Okay. Now, uh, do you fish a lot? I fish as often as I can. I don't get to fish as often as I want. Sundays I stay pretty busy, so that makes it hard for me to go fishing on the weekends. But yeah, love to fish. Now you're also going to be one of the speakers today. Uh, do you have something for people out there who's watching the show that uh, you're going to tell all these folks? I, I just want to remind everybody that even Scripture says, you know, if you teach a man to fish he goes fishing every weekend for the rest of his life so <laughs> awesome awesome there it is right there hey thanks a lot i appreciate it thank you thank you god bless all right y'all made it over to some folks who's really giving us a hand here uh let me get your name and where you're from so i'm james evans i live here in baton rouge 
Now, what they've done, they brought the big wheels out today to taxi everyone back and forth from their vehicles with their food, back and forth, bringing them in the rain, and uh, hopefully we won't have to ride the mud part of it, but uh, we can get everybody back and forth from their cars. But uh, tell them about some of the things y'all got coming up. So we have, uh, this would have been our eighth year, we're doing a St. Jude event, and it's called SMR's Halloween Ride for St. Jude. We do that at Tower Tracks every year. But this year, during, due to certain uh, things going on socially, we had to kind of down, downsize. So on October 24th, we're going to raffle off a uh, ATV donated by Gian Gonzalez. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing here today. Not only just helping y'all, but we're helping St. Jude by selling some raffle tickets. And, you know, if anybody wants to just drop a donation. Uh, but, it, you know, we got these buffs, so if you take a donation or make a ra buy a raffle ticket, you can get a buff today. We also have some little... Uh, wine chalets with the uh, uh, art from, I'll show this real quick, that's art from one of the uh, St. Jude patients. Oh, wow. So $20, four tickets, you get one of these free. So, uh, yeah, just, just kind of, you know, enjoying life and helping y'all guys out and Southern Mud Riders. How can, they get in, how can they get in touch with you? So you can go to our Facebook page, uh, Southern Mud Riders. Riders with a Z, or just come visit us today. That'd be the easiest thing. We're here all day helping out, get some great food. It smells wonderful, by the way. So just come see us. And, I mean, we're easy to find. Best way, Southern, uh, Southern Mud Riders on Facebook. Thank you all for coming out. No problem. Thank you. All right, y'all. I got somebody here y'all really going to like. It's Miss Ashton Gill, who was actually on American Idol. And uh, tell us a little bit about that story. Well, um, so I think it was about two years ago now um, that I was on American Idol. Um, I auditioned in New Orleans originally, and then once I made it past those auditions, the auditions that you probably saw was the one in Coeur d'Alene um, with Lane Hardy, and, you know, he won it. Um, but anyways, uh, that has opened a lot, of, a lot of doors for me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just pursuing music now. Now, uh, how can people get a hold of your music, or how can people... Uh listen to your music or tell us something you've got coming up or some things you got planned um okay so i have a website at www.ashtongill.com um i also have instagram and facebook at ashton brook gill music um and then i do have two songs out already uh one of them is ain't afraid to get lost hometown girl and then i'm actually releasing another song this friday called mercy on me well, really really cool i want to thank you for coming out and doing the national anthem and uh good luck in the future thank you thank you Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style press po'boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, Come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking.
Hey, Todd, you uh, check that seasoning yet? Ain't no need in that, but we got this. All right, y'all, I have the president of the Lutcher Gramercy Lions Club, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hello, everyone. I'm David Reno, and this is my third term as the president of Lutcher Gramercy Lions Club. And uh, we'd like to welcome y'all to come to the Lutcher Park today. We have our annual Cusho uh, and Delay, which is one of our main fundraiser, fundraisers for the Lions Club. We, uh, we offer a variety of things. Our main dishes are the chicken and the pork over dirty rice with gravy, salad, and uh, bread. And uh, we have a, a variety of sweets. And, and what a lot of people come here for is our crackling. We have uh, over 23, we have 23 cooks of uh, cooking crackling today. And they'll, after, the, uh, after the contest, we'll make that available to the public. So come by, you can get a variety of crackling. And we have good cold refreshments. And uh, we have a washerboard tournament later in the day. We have a nice band, uh, Mike Broussard and, and Night Train will provide uh, music entertainment. So there's a lot to do here. We have a park if you want to bring your kids. And uh, we'd love to have you out here. And, and all the proceeds stay in St. James Parish and go to some scholarships for some of the high school seniors. And uh, we support the, the Louisiana Lions Club Crippled Children's Camp and a couple of other Lions Club charities. So all the money goes to good places. And that's why I like coming out here, too. This is, this is a community event. You couldn't do this with three people. You no. couldn't do it with ten people. Uh, how many people you think you got hands-on, boots it, it, on the ground? It really does take an army. Uh, we, we have about 35, 40 active members in the Lions Club, and, and every one of these guys are here today. Um, and and it's, a, it's a couple months. You know, we prepare for a couple of months. So It's good stuff, y'all. you got to come next year. You won't make it today because we already here. But uh, it's good food, it's good fun, and it's all for a good cause. So uh, y'all stay tuned. We're going to see some really good food. See you next year. <laughs> well, here I am with Wild Italian over here at the JFA Jumala Festival, the booth in front of the rec center. How's it going so far? Doing good, man. We're just uh, beautiful weather. Can't beat this. Yeah, it's going to be a warm Christmas parade. We hadn't had one of these in a while. Gilbert wanted hot chocolate today, but I talked him out of it. I hear you. We got nice cold drinks, a hamburger, and jambalaya. So how is this event rank? Um, I know the jambalaya festival is actually the biggest thing that you guys do, but this is probably second biggest, huh? Yeah, man. Uh, we took this over quite a few years ago, and uh, I think the chamber had it, and they wanted to give it up, and nobody else wanted to step up, so I figured... If we could uh, put it on, something that I would have loved to have when we was kids, you know, to have a doggone parade. We never had something like this. Right. So I, I'm real pleased to put on this for the kids mainly, you know. Well, look, let me ask you a question. Next year, can we get like a big jambalaya pot float and put the champion in it? That's what we had planned on a long time ago. When I won in 93, I was on a, a regular utility trailer. Right. And and they had the big wicker chairs and all, and me and the queen was riding on the on the trailer. Yeah, we need to get the champ in the parade. So, all right, well, James LeBlanc is your grand marshal. What what can you say about a guy like that, man? He volunteers more than you do. I'm telling you, he's a community-minded rascal, just like I am. You know, I mean, that's what it takes. People step up and do the, do do their part, man. How much uh, jambalaya are y'all cooking today? Uh, 60 pounds, about 350, 400 serving. All right. Well, Ronnie, you got any more questions for, uh, you know, it's a hero's Christmas. Wally might be my hero. but I think he's my hero. He, he might not be mine, though. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies' night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. 
Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. It's really nice out here, and me and Larry's having a good old morning out here. One of the biggest parts of the Couchon Delay is the crackling cook-off, and, and this goes way back to 76. And uh, I got my buddy here, Larry Roussel, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the crackling contest. He's in charge of the judging part of it, so uh, this is really big for the community. And tell us a little bit about it, Larry. Well, John Carpenter is the head of the uh, Crackling Cook-Off, and I just help him with the judging aspect of it. And we're at the Lutcher Park, and rain is, weather is always a factor. But under this pavilion, we've got a lot of cover, so we, we protect it. So if it's floods, yeah, we out. But, yeah. but, but good weather, yeah, we're in. And today, you know, we've we, we got 22 cooks Woo! in the competition. And you and I talked about it just a minute ago. A lot of them are former champs. A lot of them came out yeah. before, and uh, you know they got different forces to be reckoned with, and it, newcomers too. But uh, the crackling cook-off is a, is a raises money for the event. It also brings a lot of people here. We got with 22 teams, they're going to bring all their support. So it's a it's a it's a great now great we'll have competition. first, second, and third. First, second, and third. Yeah, in one category. Some people like to the crackling with the meat on it some of them don't that's up to the cook some of them like salt some of them like season it's up to you then the judges are going to pick out the ones that they like best now i'm i can't tell you what they're going to like every judge is going to be different, right but, right so and, and and this is a prestigious award y'all because these guys is it's not a bunch of kids over there this is older guys that's been cooking cracklings a long time exactly right well said you know and it's not just st james Parish. you know you got a lot of ascension Parish, which Santa Mo, to me, Santa Mo got a lot of great crackling yeah, cooks. Yeah. St. Charles does. You got the, the Lafouche Parish, cut off all that area, crackling cooks. But uh, we got a different style from the from the Lafayette area. The Lafayette like more meat. Yeah. And all here, they like the, the skin more than, than the meat. So. And that's it, y'all. It's the crackling contest. We're going to check out the cooks, and we're going to have a winner by the end of the day. Hey, bro, Mr. Wally, you want to uh, get out of the way for a minute there, buddy? All right. Oh, hell, we go. Nailed it. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all, I've got with me the Crawfish Festival Queen, Miss Chloe Ernest. How's it going? It's going good. I'm excited to try this. Now, uh, one of the people cooked a crawfish bis out here, and uh, since she's the Crawfish Queen, we had to give her 
crawfish. I mean, it's it's only right. It's only right. Definitely. Now, uh, our event's coming up. Due to COVID, we didn't get to have it this year, and it's going to be? It's going to be on April 11th, and we're going to have some good people and some good food. We're going to have a car show, and we're going to have a good time. And I'm going to tell you all what, it's going to be bigger and better since we skipped a year. So uh, maybe you'll taste one of them crawfish while we uh talking about the crawfish festival. She uh, she she loves crawfish, i got to say. Uh, we sat down before on one of our shows and uh, wore some crawfish out. So uh, you got any flavor in there, or spice? What you, what you thinking about it? A little bit of spice. It's perfect. It's really good. I never had anything like this before. Oh, well, cool. Well, you'll yeah. get to taste the, the actual in-the-head bis part, and that's really cool. Yeah. All right, y'all. April 11th, you can come see the Crawfish Queen. Tell you what, why, uh, Ronnie, they better look out. Looking at this, I am the captain now. I'm loving it, brother. I'm loving it. Hello, good morning, everybody. Here I am. I'm Mike Strong with Ascension Magazine. Uh, yesterday, we got our pig started to start this uh, Super Bowl rib off event. Uh, it's been cooking over tonight. Uh, Peggy Sue's looking good. But today, somebody's going to be crowned the 14th champion of the Super Bowl rib off. Sponsored by Ascension Magazine, just like the LSU Tigers. Somebody's going to go all the way. As you can see, we got guys surrounding us over here with all kinds of fancy pits. We had to call a couple of demerits on a couple of guys trying to sneak in some new rules and stuff, but we got them straight and uh, we got some new great cooks. We got some jambalaya champions. We got uh, some crackling cooking champions here, but we expect this to be a big year and uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, trying to win for the second year in a row since I won the title last year. But it doesn't matter. It's all good fun. And we're out here uh, on Little Prairie Road having a nice sunny day. Uh, just wish it'd stop raining sometime. And I gotta say this, John, the lovely Ashley Fruge, anchor lady, traffic lady, WBRZ Tune In. All right, where are my crawfish cooks at? Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement. It's bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche sausage. It's a wonderful thing. True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com. <laughs> 